Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. We're on day two of our beehive project. We thought we could come to the site today and just start our repairs on the soffit, but unfortunately we think another colony of bees has been attracted to the honey that we removed and let fall to the ground uh, on, our first, on our first day, mm -hmm. right. We've hooked up our garden hose to the hot water line on the washing machine. So we're gonna use hot water and start at the top. I've got a bucket and a brush and some soap in there. And we're just gonna cl clean everything all the way down and hopefully that will dissipate the bees. Uh, I'm gonna be suited up. Uh, we don't wanna be stung again. I in did get stung a couple of times yesterday. Jeez. You see my hand? Yeah, I think one got me here and then one over here. It's much better today, just very itchy. So I think it's time to get to work, huh? All right, so you wanna head up there and start cleaning? Yeah, you wanna help me get finished getting dressed? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> well, we thought we got two left-handed gloves, but that means large. Right. <laughs> well, we might need an XL yeah, because, for the left hand. Because I can't get my hand in there. It's swollen so much. Ah, oh, man. Oh, it doesn't hurt. It's just, there we go. You got and it? Things we do. Right. Let's do it, gang. Here we go. Let's get up there. So dad, I don't know if um, bees use pheromones. I think they might. I don't know a lot about bees, but I think they might be attracted to the scent even after the fact. So I think scrubbing the board would be a good idea. All right, I'll hit it real quick. Yeah. Is this a soffit repair video, a scaffolding cleaning video, or a brick restoration video? All the above. <laughs> we do it all. We do the stuff other people won't do. Yeah. So we're cleaning this brick face because we know some honey dripped down right here. We're just scrubbing all this and it's actually removing some of this, whatever it is. Right, it's dirt, something. Yeah. It looks awesome. I'm wondering if the rainwater as it's coming out of that, coming through that hive by the chimney. Oh, up some, maybe. Picked up something out of that hive. Hey, we got this area all cleaned. So before we start cleaning the bottom, we're just gonna finish up here at the top. Then as we take our scaffold down, we're gonna clean on the way down. Right. So we're not constantly going up and down. So I've got a few nails to pull. And we'll scrape off all that caulk up there. This this cut was already here. We didn't make that one. There was a two by six with a bevel on it right here. We're gonna attach it to the brick with some tap cons to give us a nailer for the bottoms. And then we just have these three pieces of soffit to put in and this piece. Yep. Now, on a previous video, I think we mentioned this wire, didn't we, Jordan? Yes. Well, this is the kind of thing you run into all the time, and you're like, what the heck? So, and so this, this is some Romax that originates inside the building, then it comes outside the sheathing, and then it goes back in the building. So that had to be like a, a renovation, something that was added later. So the other side of this wall is a beautiful textured hand-painted finish that the homeowner did. And, we don't want to get in there because we'll never, ever be able to fix it. I hate leaving stuff like this, but in this case, we just have to leave it. Fixing it would be another huge project. So we're just gonna do the best we can with that wire. 
We may have to put a bevel on the back of this two by six to accommodate it. I think we're ready, huh? Right. Let's just get the rest of these nails pulled, clean up the caulk, and go downstairs and start cutting, huh? Yep. We'll give it a coat of primer. Yep. We'll paint it the same that we painted the other soffit. Seal all the edges, and we'll be good. Yes, sir. Alrighty guys, so what dad's doing right now is he's washing a, an existing board that we actually removed from the soffit itself. It's going to be that back piece. We have two full soffit pieces that are six feet long and then this one that's three feet. And our new soffit board down there laying across the tailgate is 12 feet. So we have to use one of the existing boards that we removed to patch it up, which is okay. It's totally fine. Yeah. I it's totally in great condition. I totally screwed up and estimating how long that was yeah but instead of using three new pieces we're just going to use two and uh and luckily this board is completely salvageable and it and we preserved it when we were removing it so it's going to look great so we're just going to reinstall it just gave it a really good wash to try and get all the scent and uh and remaining hive stuff off of it looks like it slid in super nice just then yep perfect just going to nail it off then huh yep send it this is hard to do in a bee suit. Yeah. How's the vision in there? It's okay. It's not bad. Let's go 66 and 5 ace. Okay. Do the long point. Okay. Alrighty guys, and down here at the miter saw, we have our new soffit board. We're gonna be using two six foot pieces. Our exact measurement's gonna be 66 and 5 eighths. So what I'm gonna do is, that's our long point to our miter. So I've got about five or six inches roughly to work with. I'm gonna cut the board right down the middle at a square angle, and then I'm gonna be mitering the right edges right here and basing my measurement off of the long edge of the miter, coming 66 and 5 eighths to our 90 degree and just chopping it right there to make it nice and easy. So we're gonna get our two pieces cut, bring them up to dad and he's gonna put them up nice and easy. How she fit? It's good down here. This might take both of us. Okay. Let me see if I can just get this top started. How are we looking right here, Dad? We're in. Yeah, we're money? So on the board we took down, um, let me back up. Right. We think there was a previous repair here because on the board we took down with tongue and groove boards, it's a fight to get the last one in because you got the tongue and the groove and they had ripped half of the groove off to make it easier to get in. Right. So this one, we angled down a little bit. We just pulled the nails a little bit. Then we were able to slide this one into the tongue and groove and now the two are going up as a unit. Yep. But I'm... I'm past the fascia now, so I'm gonna use the blunt and a hammer, and I can tell we're gonna be fine. Money. Nice. Did you catch that in, bud? Okay. All right, the nails will pull that up. Cool. What type of nails are you using? These are galvanized finishing nails. We did put our nails through here. Can you see that? So they don't show, but I got to face nail this one and I'm just gonna face nail the whole thing. All right. We're 24 feet in the air. Right, just two more at the bottom. You want yes, to do them? Sure. <laughs> Go. Way down. Hmm? <laughs> That's a long way down. Sure, I was just doing like two. Yep. It's mm -hmm. going to bounce on you a little bit because it's not tight against the block, but. It's tough. Nailing across your body. Yep. This high in the air. Yep. Upside down. Yep. 
Respect to uh, all of our roofers. Yep. And people who are doing this stuff on the daily. Yep. Nothing but respect for you guys. Somewhere right here. We're hand nailing it just because we didn't want to haul our compressor out here for six nails. Yep. Boom. All right, give me one more above that other one. You got it. Got it. Wow. And so what we did, we're gonna, we're gonna put in the two by six here. But before we do that, I wanna show you what we did right here. This, is, this was the access point for all the bees. And we're gonna seal this, but I put some steel wool in there so if the sealant ever fails, we got that steel wool behind it. Yep, sorry for the wind. Yep, uh, I would have preferred to use bronze wool, but I think we're fine with that. Cool. And then remember that, that piece of Romex I showed you before. Yep. I just tuck it behind the siding. Yeah, I pull the siding out a little bit and that's the best I could do. All right. We already test fit this, so we primed it beforehand. So it's one less thing I gotta cut it, you know. Right, you're not trying to I'll cut have, in up I'll here. Have, I'll have to cut in three times, I just have to cut in twice. Right. With one knee on the chimney and one knee on the... <laughs> yeah, and we do have the soffit Yep, up this is all done. And uh, primed. Yep, and already, I don't hear or see a single bee. Yeah, when, I, I, when we rolled up, it was constant buzzing. Yep. So they moved on. They moved on. How many Tapcons are we doing? 40. I, I think three will be enough. We did bring them, right? Dude. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'll be back. Your time. Your turn for cardio. happening so when did we oh for the gas lantern remember yeah. we were doing that and I said sometimes they bite sometimes they don't mm -hmm. it's like it went so far and then it just stripped stripped yeah huh like we said I got about a 50 50 success rate with these it depends on the brick if it's really soft they'll just strip just like a screw would with in wood right and we definitely have the right size drill bit. We already checked that. Hmm. So it's a hole issue? Yeah, it stripped the it stripped the it stripped the brick, just like a wood screw strip oh. or a machine bolt strips the threads. Well let's just use your idea. We'll put a couple a couple of toe screws into the sheathing. Yeah. Just so we seal this up for tonight. Okay. And then we'll come back with, with some anchors. anchors. Yep. Alright, sounds good. Saw it pull in? Yep. So it's tied up against the house. Yep. But, but I want, that's what I want to Right. But, but, in, but you need the anchor for that. Yep. Well, as long as it's tied up against the house, we got that steel wool stuffed in there. Clean up and, and tackle it. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have anchors with me. Right. We got to go get some. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you on what? I think Monday. Monday? Today's Saturday. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you on Monday, gang. What is up guys? Sorry about the wind. It's a little bit of a windy day if it's on the mic, but it is the next day. It is actually Monday, like we said, and we have everything we need to go back up on the scaffolding and complete the installation of our two by six and get the soffit patched up and ready to go for paint. So we have our anchors, our screws, our bits, everything we need. So let's head up there and get it finished. Let's go. The best part is no more bee suit. I was about to say, first time up here with no bee suit. Yeah. And uh, we've seen like two or three bees. But that's about it, and they're towards the bottom. Yep. We saw some big bubble bees earlier. Right. Cool. And so this is really the first time that y'all are seeing the the new boards, the two by six, and the soffits from this side, and it looks pretty freaking awesome. And we haven't given it a, a fresh coat of paint. That's just primer with two toe screws in the two by six. The soffits are secured, but you can't really see the nail holes. 
or anything like that. We got a, we got this guy hanging around. Hopefully he's nice. But we're gonna get the bulldog plugged in. We just gotta open up this hole that we made to make way for our anchors that we have, and we're gonna secure it. Yeah, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Right. On how to attach this to the brick without marking the brick, taking this down, drilling the brick, putting this back up, and trying to line everything back up. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. So the key, this is one of my favorite anchors for concrete, and this is, this is old school. I know there's all kind of fancy concrete anchors out there, but um, we've got this really soft brick right here. That's called a trilobe anchor. It's three sections. It takes a quarter inch hole. So what I'm gonna do first is drill a quarter inch hole through the two by four. And two this, by six. I'm sorry, two by six. Right. And this is a, I don't wanna use a brand new bed or anything because I'm bound to hit the brick at some point. Maybe not this one. I'll try not to go all the way through, but in case I do, I don't mind ruining the tip of this bit. Yeah. I can always sharpen that one. We could put a quarter inch masonry bit in here and drill through the wood. It just doesn't make a clean of a hole, and sure. I need a pretty clean hole through here because we're going to drive that anchor through the wood into the brick. Right. So there's my cordless three-jaw chuck coming off. SDS chuck. SDS is that type of shank. Super dope shank. Yep. And click. Click. Ready to go. Now we're gonna drill through here into the brick. You see the bit go easy there? Mm -hmm. I probably hit one of those hollow cores of the brick. Oh, okay. Which is fine. So there's our anchor. Now I can tell I'm in the brick. And I can see right here. All right. Now I can see in here that the brick, that the anchor is now flush to the brick. And what would you do if you couldn't see through that right. gap? So you can actually feel it. It's hard for me up here because where we are, but you can feel when the anchor lets loose of the wood and is into the brick, the wood almost pops back a little bit hmm. shouldn't be that hard nice. but just seems like everything up here is three times as hard huh now one of the keys to doing it like this is that the head of the fastener obviously must be bigger than a quarter of an inch so we're just going to try this one first i'm going to see how it behaves There we go. Nice. Now we're cool. Now we're tight. Yep. So this was my backup plan. But we're gonna stick with this. Yeah. Just as long as the head is larger. How come the head has to be larger? Because we drilled a quarter inch hole through the wood, so the head has to be larger than a quarter of an inch. Otherwise it'll just go right through the hole we drilled. Oh, so it kind of provides some like resistance, right? And like a stopping could, point. You could even put a washer under the screw if you wanted to. Oh, you could. Sure. We've seen that. Yep. Cool. So, um, two more. Let's do two more. Okay. That wasn't too bad. Yep. Yeah, I could tell this one was solid all the way, but then this one and this one, I hit a, a void in the brick. Hmm. But the anchor's grabbing on to yep. that yep. that outer you shell, right? Plenty of brick to right. hang on to. When you do this, it's important to find something that's close to the diameter of your hole and it's flat you wouldn't want to use a narrow punch or anything where it would go in the anchor in the anchor and flare out the end and then you're not going to drive it sure you got to drive it from the end i've had some success with starting the screw and we could try it if you want and then you hit the screw and the screw drives the anchor let's try one the advantage of that is you know your screw has started in the middle of the anchor like that yeah okay, see the anchor coming through oh I heard it in there yeah you can hear it you hear it change right 
And it looked like it also got easier once you were in the yep, brick. Absolutely. How oh, nice. Nice. Yep. I think that's gonna be it. Nice. Yep. I don't think any bees are getting through there unless they're like radioactive. Yep. It's packed with uh, steel wool. Remember? Steel wool, yeah. right. Yeah. Or any bugs for that matter. Right. I even went way up here. Yeah. Into this drip edge. What's the next step? Let's paint it. Now, I'm not gonna cover these. I'm gonna leave these like they are. And the main reason is, if someone ever has to get back up here, for whatever reason, they'll be able to see these screws and know how to take it down easily without tearing it apart. Right. Yeah, where my feet are is, what, 18 feet off the ground? Because these are six foot sections, so uh -huh. this is 20 plus. And then there's no, you don't have a view of this from anywhere. Right. And with a nice coat of paint, it'll look it'll look fine. Yeah, you know how finicky we are about painting and filling holes, but in this application, I'm gonna leave them. Cool. So, are you gonna paint then seal or sealed in paint? The sealant we're using is uh, you can't paint it. It won't oh. accept paint. Oh, okay. Paint first, I guess. We don't want to use any. I didn't want to use a latex caulk. I wanted something that was gonna endure up here. So we're gonna paint and then seal all along here, 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 and at the ridge. Right up here. Yep. Perfect. All right, let's get a painting so then. Get the paint behind yeah, you. right here. And that's why we primed the board before we installed it because there's a lot of cutting in and it's just much easier to prime it. If we'd have had the time, we would have, I would have put a first coat of finish color on there before we right. even put it on. Nice. Should we just paint these two? Yep. I thought that was what we were gonna do. Otherwise, we're gonna paint the, end up painting the whole house, huh? <laughs> we don't know where to don't know where to stop sometimes with this stuff. Yeah. This would be a fun house to paint, wouldn't it? Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. I mean, we'd spray it probably, but yep. that would be awesome. All right, we're gonna go whoop, whoop. Okay. Perfect. We're good. Yep. Awesome. So, Dad, I had that paintbrush with paint on it. Where, what'd you do with it? You just had to ask, huh? What happened to it? Well, it landed exactly where I wanted it in the pine needles. I didn't want to put it here with my tools. But then, of course, it bounced on the nice slate paving stone. So Nice. We'll just leave it like that. John Paul won't care. <laughs> We're going to let this dry while we go get something to eat. And that should be it up yeah. here. Huh? Hop back up here and seal it. Yep. Cool. My favorite part. All right, final step, gang. This is what we're using to seal all the joints. Quad OSI. Uh, this is white. Now, one thing about this stuff, if we can see right here, Jordan, do not tool, feather, or smear. Right. So we want to apply a nice bead and then leave it alone. I'm going to do my best to leave it alone. You have to make sure I don't touch it, okay? Okay. <laughs> So I think the guy that caulked the finished trim work inside our house must have read these instructions and just applied it to everything because it's horrible. They didn't do anything. Mm. I, I can hardly stand it. Oh. So we have thin places that don't require a lot of caulk and then we have wider places that require more. So I'm gonna start with a small opening and then I may cut it again and maybe a third time. We'll do all the small stuff first and then we'll cut it, the tip a little wider, get our bigger stuff. Hmm. So it's and just gonna have to be like a rough bead then. Yep. Hmm. I'm gonna cut it on, on an angle. We'll see how this cutter works on the, on the caulk gun. 
That'll be fine. A little more pressure. Slowing down a little bit where the mortar is so you can fill in that irregular area. It looks all right. It looks great. From the ground, it's going to look phenomenal. <clears throat> you want to catch that? Yeah, I can. Right here? Yeah. And then uh, we'll cut the tip a little wider. Maybe up here, a little, probably wider. Okay. Yeah, gotta cut it wider. Super sticky. Yeah. And you can always kind of tell how much you have left by your plunge rod. All right. I think all we have left is got that and right here, so we have plenty. Okay. That's it, boy. Ready? A little little gap right here. Want me to hit the eve real quick? If you can deal with it, I say go for it. I can deal with it on my finger. Yeah, go for it then. It's just... I mean, you have to ask yourself, why is the rule in place? Right. Is it... If it's not harmful to you, you know, and they're just and, saying that for, like, convenience sake. But you can tell that... Incredibly messy. Yeah. All right, I think I just gotta leave it. Yep. Okay. I'm excited to see how it looks from the bottom. Mm-hmm. But let's uh, let's send all this rope and hose and all that down. Okay. Let's get the scaffold down. Yep. We're going to scrub on our way down. Hey, when we put the scaffolding together, we had a very difficult time with this joint. We almost had to, well, we did have to beat it down to get it to seat. So I had the forethought to actually remember to bring my bottle jack. And we're gonna have to jack it apart. And yes, I made that. <laughs> you know, these bottle jacks come with two-piece handles that drive me crazy. We might just buy our own, huh? Yep. We've been using them like crazy. We sure have. They come in handy. I can store them at your place? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's see if this works. It's beautiful. It was just enough that we couldn't pull it, but that's working. I'm going to keep my left hand right here. He said, let's see if this works. And it's a bottle jack on a scaffolding. <laughs> see? There we go. All right. That's all we needed. All right, see, it's there. Nice. If I had forgotten that, I could have used the... Uh, vehicle jack in, my, in the truck, right? Right. Hey guys, we are all done with our B project. You remember we removed all the wood? Make sure you go back and watch, is there a previous video? Mm -hmm. Go back and watch the previous video about how we got in there, found the hive, removed it, replaced the wood, primed it, 
painted it, and then sealed it. And remember, we also used steel wool in any gap or crack that we thought was large enough for a bee to get into in case that sealant ever fails. And we didn't use a caulk, we used a, a sealant. And remember, we showed it in the video. Our plan was to put a, maybe rent a man lift, but it would have had to have gone over here, right? Um, it just didn't work out. It was too far of a reach, and we are in the middle of nowhere. The delivery fee was kind of out of sight. So we just did it with the scaffolding. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions about the tools that we used or the equipment that we used to finish this job, make sure you guys ask in the comments. We love hearing from you and responding. And as always, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Share with us down in the comments if you would have done something differently or what you enjoyed watching us do. If you learned something, make sure you hit subscribe. We're on the road to 1,000, and we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Good job, bud. That was awesome.